Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. I pray everybody's doing well. It's 730, so you know what time it is. It's time for worship, and we're excited about what the Lord has done, what he's doing, and what he is going to do on this beautiful Tuesday evening. And so what I'd ask you to do is let, let's prepare ourselves. Let's get, get, get ready. We're going to get ready for the move of God for tonight. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You just make that place your sanctuary. You prepare that place and watch God do what he's going to do. So let's get started. Share with the folk. Let them know on Zoom, on Facebook, uh, on our website that it's available. The broadcast is there. Go share. Let them know that we're on. And they don't want to miss tonight because we are going to be blessed. So let's begin our worship experience. David says in the hundred Psalm, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. He says, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. He says, don't you know that the Lord, he is God. It's he that hath made us. We haven't made ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Therefore we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Somebody ought to be thankful unto him. And if you're thankful, you ought to act like you're thankful and you ought to bless his name. And I hear, I hear you. I hear some folk that may not be regulars on the broadcast, may not come on the stream that often and say, well, Pastor Moore, why should we be thankful? Because we're in the midst of a challenging time. We're in the midst of some difficult situations. Well, I will declare just as the psalmist declared, for the Lord is still good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations, hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, right where you are, just bless God. Open your mouth, lift up your hands. Come on, give God some real good praise. Right there in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room, in your family room, in your basement, at your dining room table, wherever you are. Come on, let's give God some real good praise because he is a good God and a good God deserves a good praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. He is awesome and he's wonderful and he keeps on doing great things. Amen, amen. All right, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray in just a moment and I'll present those that will be leading us in our worship experience. And so uh, once you, you should be settled, everybody should be in your place and let's pray. God, we do bless you because it's a great day. It's the day that you've made. You've allowed us to be a part of your plan and a part of your purpose. And we're just so excited about you. Thank you for blessing us to be able to connect even when we can't physically come together. God, you've just blessed us so that we can still come together. And the church is the ecclesia, the coming together of those who are called out. And so we thank you for that. Have your way tonight. Do what you want to do minister according to your plan and your purpose. God, I pray for those that watch live tonight. Then I pray for those that may watch the, the replay. Wherever, whenever, however they see it, God, I pray that you'll meet them right where they are and do exactly what they need you to do in their lives so that their lives will be changed. We love you, bless you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight, tonight we uh, we have our we have family with us tonight. We have family. We uh, I don't have to do an introduction of our praise leader because uh, she she she's home, folks. She's she's blessed us when she was on the East Coast. When she lived on the East Coast, she would come and bless us at uh, Judah Outreach Center in Baltimore and always, always minister to us in such a powerful way. Uh, during this time of the pandemic, she's been a blessing to the Judah family and the Judah connection, or the whole Judah community. She's blessed us over and over again. And so I'm excited about Sister Johanna McCoy. She is her and you know her wonderful husband who was our musician at Judah Outreach Center for a while. And so they are family. They, for those of you that don't know, they've relocated to Portland, Oregon, and they are the worship pastors out there in Portland, Oregon, and just doing a tremendous job. And we're so excited about what God is doing in their lives, but we're thankful that she's going to be leading, be leading us in our praise and worship this evening. And then following Sister Johanna, we have a, a preacher, teacher tonight. We have somebody that uh, has really, really, I've been excited about uh, hearing this word tonight. There are many of the Judah members that have shared 
uh, the information from the Fellowship of Champions uh, Church International, and I have all have followed the ministry of our preacher tonight, and so I'm really looking forward to hearing our preacher. She is a uh, preacher, teacher, she's a scholar, she's an author, she's written, I think it's three books that she has written. Um, she is definitely has all the letters behind her name. Y'all know I don't like reading from bios and all that stuff, but she has, she's qualified. She has all the letters behind her name. She has the, all them letters. <laughs> she got, she's graduated. She's done her work. Uh, but, but that's not what's important to me. The, the fact of the matter is I love, I love, uh, her, um, uh, whenever you hear about her, anybody, uh, anything about her, they present her as a Jesus lover. And that's all I need to know. She's a Jesus lover. And she is a blessing to the body. She, and along with her husband, they pastor. They're the founding pastors of the, Fellow, the Fellowship of Champions International Church in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, she's none other than Pastor Sean Strickland, but affectionately known as Pastor Sean. And so after the uh, Sister Johanna, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Sean and pray for her as God uses her to minister to us. Amen. Amen. Sister Johanna. I'm here. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Praise God. Pastor Moore, thank you guys again for inviting me out to worship with you all. So there's been a song that's been in my heart all week long, and it talks about how we are free in God. Um, and in God, we know who we are. I want to sing this song because it's been in my heart so much. Um, and I hope that it blesses and ministers to someone out there. It says, Who am I that I was lost, but you brought me in all your love for me. Yes, your love for me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, it's free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Realize he has ransomed all the great runs. Yeah. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Whom the sun set Oh, it's free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Go to the next one. I am chosen, not born Savior. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not born Savior. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we praise, got you. Praise God. I'm not sure what happened. That video went away. I couldn't chat anything. So here we are. Okay, um, so I'm really excited to be here. Thank you, Pastor Moore, for this opportunity. I won't be before you very long. The title of my teaching tonight is Obedience, the Path to Freedom. So I thought it was beautiful. Um, when the um, worship leader sung a song about being free. So we're going to pray and we're going to get started. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We give you praise and thanksgiving. You are gracious and you are kind. You have been so mindful for us that you have secured our freedom through the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our God and leads us into all truth. Father, we thank you that you said that anytime we could see, hear, and understand that we would be converted and healed. So we declare that today is our conversion day and we will never be the same again in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm talking about today, obedience, the pathway to freedom. And I want to talk about um, really quickly, I want to talk about Romans 12 and two, and you, you will be able to see it from the new living translation. I will be using another translation because I had to switch out my devices, but we will all get to the same point. Romans 12 and 2 is actually one of my favorite scriptures um, because it tells us the key to living the life that God wants us to live after we have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior. So I'm just going to start reading. I'm going to read ver um, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed unto this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. 
For I say through the grace given to me that every man who is among you not think more highly of himself than he ought to, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member one of another. So I want to talk about this because I think that this is important, um, that it's important that we really look at this scripture and what it tells us about our responsibility to participate in our own freedom. One of the things that I say a lot is that you have to participate in your own rescue. Well, that's true even in the kingdom. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but in order for us to be able to receive that gift, we have to participate. How do we participate? We believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now, third John tells us, he says, beloved above all things, I wish that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That scripture gives us a lot of insight to how the kingdom of God works. It says the degree of my prosperity in any area, my relationships, finances, my physical health, it is going to be directly related to the prosperity of my soul. Well, what's my soul? My soul is my mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination. It's my mind, my will, my emotions, my intellect, and my imagination. So he says, listen, if you want to prosper in your body, you need to understand what I say in my word about how to take care of yourself, how to manage your stress, how to not be offended, how to walk in love, how to eat right, how to move your body. Those things, when you come into agreement, they will begin to produce prosperity in the area of your health. The same is true for money. The same is true for relationships. But then Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 1, he says, now I'm appealing to you. I'm beseeching you. I am begging you that you present your body to God. So many of us, you know, one of the things I think um, is that many of us have been taught to accept Jesus as Savior, but not as Lord. So as a result, we're like, hey, I don't want to go to hell. I want you to save me. I don't want to have all this crazy stuff happen to me. But it asks, he's also asking us to present ourselves as Lord. How do we do that? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Well, let's look at the definition of the word sacrifice. The definition of the word sacrifice means the act of slaughter or surrender as an offering to God. Now, in the New Living Translation, I believe that what it says is, I, bese I plead with you to present your body to God for all he has done for you. Well, if you're watching this and you are a born-again believer, then you know that God has paid the ultimate price for you. There is no way we could earn our way to heaven. There is no way we could earn salvation. There is no way we could earn grace, redemption, favor, increase, none of those things. We cannot earn them. We could not earn our sins being paid. So then and Paul turns around and says, now I'm pleading with you that you present your bodies to the Lord because of what he's done for you. In the King James, it says, present your body as a living sacrifice. That means that even though I am still alive, it's not Christ in me. That It's not me that's living, but it's Christ in me. To live as a living sacrifice, that means that I have to be willing to do something that Paul also talks a lot about, which is to crucify my flesh, to crucify my flesh. And this, this is one of the teachings that we don't always like to hear, but it's the kind of teaching that grows us up because it leads us to obedience. In Isaiah 119, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. There are many believers who are frustrated because they're like, I go to church. I love Jesus. Why am I not getting breakthrough in these areas? My question to you tonight is, have you presented your body to the Lord as a living sacrifice? Now, I don't know how you grew up, but I grew up hearing that scripture as though that scripture just sat around fornication and sexual sin. But if I'm going to present my body to God as a living sacrifice, that means I'm going to present my soul to God. I'm going to give God access to what? My mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination, right? I'm going to give God's word authority. It's going to become first 
and final. If I'm going to present my body to God, I'm presenting my soul. I'm now presenting my mouth. What does that mean? That means I don't say everything that I want to say. That means that I may think something, but I go, how does this thought align with what God has said in his word? So I got to cast that thought down, which is what 2 Corinthians tells us to do. It says, we have these things where we think against God. We don't agree with God, even if we love him. We all have some things in our, our flesh because our flesh is always warm against God. I believe um, in Galatians says the, the flesh is enmity against God. So it means that no matter how much I love God, no matter how much I fast, no matter how much I give, no matter how much I pray, no matter how many scriptures I quote, I have a flesh that I must crucify day to day. I believe that one of the reasons that a lot of believers live frustrated is because what we think is an external war, me against you, me against my husband, me against my kids, my coworker, me against the devil, because the devil was wrestling me all night long. It is really me against me. It's me, my born again self, and it's me, my corrupted flesh. And my corrupted flesh cannot please God. My corrupted flesh is always going to war against God. So Paul says, here is how you get authority over that. You have to present yourself. Now, sometimes when I'm talking to people, they're like, you know, God, get, help me get control over my mouth. You may have said that. Well, the Bible tells us that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies. That doesn't just mean that the Holy Ghost is going to come on us and we're going to take off shouting. That means that the Holy Spirit will be de begin to train us and to constrain us. So if I have a problem with my mouth, if I have a problem with lust, if I have a problem with gluttony, if I have a problem with whatever sin I have a problem with, that if I will submit my body to God as a living sacrifice, willing to crucify my flesh, then what's going to happen is that the Holy Spirit will begin to teach me to get dominion. And when I get dominion over my flesh, I will walk in freedom. And so I think that this is so important important because if you look in verse two, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Isaiah 55 tells us your thoughts are not my, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. But then first Corinthians tells us, but we can know the mind of Christ because of the Holy Spirit. So maybe we come into the kingdom, maybe whatever our issue is, we don't think like God. We don't have to stay that way. We take this word, we take the leading of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit begins to use the word. He begins to use his voice to bring us into conformity with the word of God. That is the definition of soul prosperity, agreement with God. The definition of soul prosperity is agreement with God. He says, so I want you to present yourself. Have you given yourself to God? And be not conformed to this world. It's very important for us to understand that the kingdom of God runs counterculture to the world. So typically, if it is, if it is popular in the world, it is not acceptable in heaven. I'm going to say that again. Typically, whatever is popular in the world is not acceptable in heaven. For example, in the world, we define freedom as doing whatever you want to do. If it feels good, do it. Don't hold yourself in bondage. Be free, girl. Be your real self. Come on, keep it real. No, the Bible says that freedom in the kingdom is found in obeying God. Do you see that contradiction right there? So now if I am in the kingdom of God, but I don't know that freedom comes from obeying God, and I think that freedom is the ability, girl, I wanted to cuss you out. Oh, okay. Well, I felt like doing that, right? No, 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 no. In the kingdom, freedom is being constrained by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when I am constrained by the Holy Spirit, which is another way of saying crucify my flesh, when I'm constrained by the Holy Spirit, when the word is first and final, I'm going to have authority over the plots and plans of the enemy that he wants to distract me. Now, I want to go into this um, to verse... 
three, it says, for I say through the grace given to me that to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but to think soberly according as God has dealt every man the measure of faith. Now, hold on. What I love here is that it says, um, it says in the New Living Translation, it says that he has, um, that every man should judge himself according to the faith, according to the faith. Every man should judge himself according to the faith. That means since I didn't create myself, I don't get to define myself. Now, here's where we get into this being transformed. Because now what I will say is, oh, I got an anger problem because my mama had an anger problem. You know, that just runs in my family. We just get people told, you know, you see what I'm saying? And now he's saying, no, no, no. I'm not asking you to judge yourself by your natural DNA. I'm asking you to judge yourself by your spiritual DNA. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. See, we have to get to the point that we believe this word. If he says I'm new, I'm new. So I may come in struggling with my mouth. I may come in struggling with anger. I may come in struggling with depression. But when I get in this word, I ought to begin to see that I have been defined in a different way by God. And when I have been defined in a different way by God, now I have a choice to make. So I got whatever my issues are. Whatever my struggles, everybody got some, everybody got some flesh stuff. So I find out, I, you know, I got this issue. I got an anger issue. I got a lust issue. I got whatever kind of issue you want to name, right? Because the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. It says, now I got to find out what God says about me. What God says is if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It says that as Jesus is in this world, so am I. And I believe that when we begin to operate from this place, instead of managing our struggles, instead of managing sin, we will begin to step into the supernatural power available to walk in authority over sin. As we begin the practice of crucifying our flesh day to day. Now, let me just be honest. Crucifying your flesh is not easy and it is not fun. But John 15 tells us, it says, if you are in God, Everything about you that's not productive, he's going to cut it away. And everything about you that is productive, he's going to cut it so that you can be more fruitful. So basically, if you are walking with God, you're going to get cut. Why? Because God is not interested in making Sean Strickland a better version of Sean Strickland. He is interested in making Sean Strickland reflect Christ. And many times we don't let go of the things we're struggling with because we are so impressed by who we, that we are who we used to be. And now I'm measuring righteousness by who I used to be. I used to would cuss you out for that. I remember one day I was talking to the Lord about how I would have cussed somebody out about something 15 years ago. He was like, that's not even a standard, ma'am. Who you used to be isn't the standard. Christ in you is the standard. Now, I want to wrap up with this right here because I think that this is important. Why is all of this so important? I believe that we need to understand that the more I bring my thinking in alignment with God, with heaven, the more equipped I am to release heaven into the earth. When Jesus is, when the disciples ask Jesus to teach them how to pray, what they say, he says to them, pray this, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, if my mind is still bound and conformed to the world, I cannot see what is happening in heaven. So, and when the Holy Spirit is giving me downloads, I am viewing those downloads through the worldview instead of the kingdom view. I want to talk about these three types of destiny because the obedience is the path to, path to freedom, and the real freedom is to be who God taught, called you to be before the foundation. So I want to talk about three types of freedom. The, I mean, three types of destiny. So basically, every human being can choose three types of destiny, and I want to talk to you about them. Number one, prophetic destiny. What is prophetic destiny? Prophetic destiny is found in Jeremiah 1 and 5 where he says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Have you ever argued with God about who you really are? That God tells you you can come out of something and you tell him why you can't. God tells you you can do something and you tell him why you can't. He says, listen here. He says to Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Prophetic destiny is what God called you to be before anybody else got involved. He says to Jeremiah, he says, I knew you. 
he says, and I formed you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you. Those three, two, three things are important. I knew you. I was intimately acquainted with who you really are. Why? Because I was the one who shaped you in the beginning. I know your personality. I know who you really call to be. I know your gifts. I know your talents. I know your purpose. I know your destiny. I know more about you than you know about yourself. I'm going to inject this right here to say, God wants to reintroduce you to who he created you to be before time. He wants to reintroduce you to who he created you to be before time, which means you're going to have to be willing to embrace Romans 12 and 2 and stop being conformed to this world and let some things you think about yourself go because they simply are not true. Anything you cannot find in this word about yourself that goes against this word is not the truth of who you are. It may be a fact that you have an anger problem, but the truth is that you have access to the fruit of the spirit. So he says to Jeremiah, he says, number one, I knew you, intimately acquainted, and then I sanctified you. I set you apart for a purpose. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, you ought to say, I have been set apart. So if I set you apart for a purpose, I know better than you what you created to do. You got to stop trusting everything you think about yourself. Because a lot of the stuff you think about yourself, it didn't come from God. And then he says, I ordained you. Anybody know anything about ordination, know that an ordination is a public ceremony. My spiritual mother says it like this. It's time to do in earth what you're already famous for in heaven. Why? Because before time, when God created you, he had already orchestrated that you would be in this period of time right now to do a specific thing. He wired you for that. He set you apart for that. And you were ordained, ordained for that. But you actually have to say yes to prophetic destiny. Tell your neighbor, say, you must say yes to prophetic destiny. How do you say yes to prophetic destiny? It's only one way. It's not singing a song. Yes, you know, we love that song. Every, every denomination got some version of yes. The yes you must say is daily obedience. You must do what he says. When Jesus is at the um, wedding and his mother wants him to do something about the wine situation, she says to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, to do it. If you're going to walk in prophetic destiny, you have to say yes to God. You have to say yes more than I just got saved, more than just on Sunday. God, you want me to sow this seed? Yes. God, you want me to exercise? Yes. You want me to repent? Yes. You want me to apologize to my wife? Yes. I must say yes daily. That is how I crucify my flesh. Now, but I don't have to choose prophetic destiny. What do you mean you don't have to choose prophetic destiny? That's why in the Bible, he says, today I set before you what? Life and blessings, death and cursing. If you don't know which one to choose, choose life. So God has given you the power of choice. Now, what most of us do is we end up choosing some version of flesh destiny. Flesh destiny is that thing that looks good, but it's not God. And has anybody ever made the statement, oh, um, you know what, it might not be God, but it's good, or you heard somebody say that. And the whole problem with that perspective from the kingdom is that there is nothing that can be good that is not God. And flesh is when I make the decisions based on sense knowledge. So God couldn't really be calling me to do that. Does he know my background? He couldn't really be saying that to me. He couldn't really be telling me. Nobody can really live that way. Nobody can really not curse. Nobody can really stop fornicating. Nobody can really do all of that. And so now I live in flesh destiny. This is where the scripture tells us that our flesh cannot please God. So I need to understand I can choose prophetic destiny. I can choose flesh destiny. But here's the thing. If I choose flesh destiny, I'm going to automatically be tied to demonic destiny. What is demonic destiny? It's found in John 10 and 10. It says the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. One of the most powerful strategies of the enemy is to get us to choose against God so the enemy can have his way with us. Understand this. The issue in the Garden of Eden, if you go back and study that out, he does this when the serpent entices Eve, he does not entice her to serve him. There is no believer in the world that somebody's gonna come up and say, serve the devil, and we're gonna be like, oh, let's serve the devil. We're gonna be like, we don't serve the devil if you don't get out of my face. But the temptation in the garden was to serve and idolize herself. What do you mean, Pastor Sean? 
What does the serpent say to her? He said, God knows that if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. In other words, you won't need God to give you instruction. You can make your own decision. See, the perspective of the world is to make your own decision, but the perspective of the kingdom is to follow the decision of the king. So I want to challenge you. I want to leave you with these five things as we go. Number one, present your body as a living sacrifice. Number two, stop copying the world. Number three, commit to changing your mind. Number four, don't overestimate yourself. And number five, judge yourself by what God said. I'm going to say it one more time. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Two, don't copy the world. Three, transform your mind on a continual basis so you can do the will of God. Number four, don't overestimate yourself. And number five, judge who you are by the word. You are who he says you are. I want to pray for anybody right now who may be struggling with some type of stronghold, some type of addiction, some type of thing that you think, keep, think you can't come out of. And I want to speak to you and I want to tell you that the power of God is strong enough to bring you out. I want to tell you that there is nothing you have been through, no, no rejection, no abandonment, no mistreatment, no mistakes, no shame, nothing that you have done that the power of God is not bigger than it. But what I'm inviting you to do today is to say yes. I'm inviting you to obey your way to freedom. So, Father, I thank you for everybody who's watching. I thank you for any area of our lives that we may be in bondage, bondage to our flesh, bondage to wrong thinking, bondage to the enemy. I thank you that you have freed us from bondage. And every time we say yes in obedience, that bondage gets weaker in our life. I thank you for the grace to be free from things, even things that people have struggled with for years. I thank you that they are becoming aware, even in this moment, of the grace to be free. I thank you that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can raise us out of any situation. So Father, we thank you for the release of your power into the lives of your people. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the freedom. We thank you for the choices of freedom that your people will make. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So that's my time. I hope you were blessed. Pastor Moore, you can have it back. Amen. Come on, somebody bless God for that powerful word. That Word that life changing, life life transformative, life transformative word, that word of God that spoke literally to each one of us right where we are. Thank God for Pastor Sean and just systematically working through that passage to really give us a transformational word. Amen. Somebody bless God right where you are. Let's bless God right there. If you got it, clap, lift your hands. Come on, shout hallelujah. Just for that word, now receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. That which God has done for you, even through this word tonight. I'm so excited about it, excited because God's changing. Uh, and some some of you kind of heard it, but but need to hear it again. And so I would just encourage you, go back to the replay. This, uh, the Zoom meeting has been recorded. And so you can go back to the replay and watch it over again, because I think we need to digest that. We need to allow it to minister to us in such a wonderful, wonderful way. This is what I want you to do. Uh, I want to just encourage all of you, all everybody under the sound of my voice, if you're here and you're not already a Christian, if you say, Pastor Moore, I'm not saved, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, evaluate yourself. Evalu if you've never accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to be able to lead you to the Lord. And so what I would just ask you to do is just um, email saved, S-A-V-E-D, at judahtemple.net, saved at judahtemple.net, and then we'll have someone contact you. We'll reach out to you, call you. We'll work and, and lead you to the Lord and then give you the next steps to maturing in the things of God. Uh, so saved at judahtemple.net for those that may not be uh, uh, already uh, saved. And then also, if you are looking for connection, if you're looking to become a part a, of a body of believers, uh, you everybody needs to be connected to a body of believers. And so in this day and time, we're able to have virtual church uh, and we're able to connect. So we have people in uh, South Africa and Zimbabwe and in Europe and uh, and uh, all over the United States. And so if you'd like to connect, you can Email connect at judahtemple.net, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, connect 
at judahtemple.net. And once again, someone to reach out and we'll make sure you're connected. Last but not least, I say every week and every time we gather that worship's not complete until giving takes place. And so we want you to be able to have the opportunity to give. Now, for those that may be watching and say, you know what, all the preachers, all the pastors just want my money. I always say that I believe God loves a cheerful giver. So I'm going to ask that you would take that which you were thinking about giving and put it away because God doesn't want mad money and we don't want mad or skeptical money. But what we're going to do, we're not going to be upset with you, won't be mad at you. We'll pray. We'll pray that you'll understand the principles of sowing and reaping. Understand that everything you have belongs to God. And he's blessed you to be able to be a steward over it. And he only requires a very little back from us. Uh, and so once you get that understanding, you give and you're so excited about giving. Why? Because you realize you're just giving God back that which, he, what, which already belongs to him. And so we're going to pray that you'll get that understanding. For those of you who have ways to give, uh, through, you can give through Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign Judah A-M-E-Z. Dollar sign Judah AMEZ. You can give via Givelify. Givelify Judah Temple AMEZ Zion Church in Mitchellville, Maryland. You can give via our mobile app if you have that on your phone. Uh, you can give via our website, judahtemple.net, and the online giving option there. Or you can do it the old fashioned way uh, and you can drop off a check and drop it in our lockbox at the church, or you can put a check in the mail and send it to Judah Temple uh, at the address on your screen. However you decide to give, what I want you to do is hold your device or lay your hand on your computer. And what I want to do is just pray with you. I just want to come in agreement with you that God would continue to meet every need, that God will receive this gift to the, into the kingdom, and that he'll bless you accordingly. I share so often that when you sow into kingdom, that you are sowing into the kingdom's economy. And the kingdom is, kingdom's economy is prospering and doing well right now. The world's economy is a little shaky right now, but the kingdom's economy is Amen. doing extremely well. So get your device, lay your hand, and let's pray. God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to sow into kingdom. Thank you for the word that we've received. And now, God, we just want to bless you. And so, God, I pray. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray for those that are that have made a decision to give, that are giving cheerfully, that are giving because they love you, not out of necessity and uh, not grudgingly, but giving because they love you. I pray that you'll bless them in the hundredfold realm. And then God, don't only bless them according to uh, how much they give, but bless them according to their heart's intent for giving. Bless every motive today. And then use every gift to the upbuilding of your kingdom and to the destruction of the enemy's camp. Thank you for all you've done and doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those that are giving, we appreciate you because we know that when you give, God gives and he blesses you. Thank you for that. I have to once again say thank you to uh, Pastor Sean for just blessing us tonight. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in your lives. He's doing some great things. That word uh, is already working through and working out some stuff in your life. Thank God for Sister Johanna. I see, bro, I see Brother Steve hanging out too. It's, I heard you, but now I get to see you. It's good to see Brother Steve. Thank you all for just loving us and being a blessing to us always. We love you, appreciate you. Can't wait to see you be at a time when we can hug your face. We can hug you. That's going to be a real good thing. All right, just a reminder, just a reminder, Judah, is this is our last Tuesday service until after Labor Day because we're off August, August, Tuesday night services. services. We're off from our Tuesday night services. services. Um, uh, but we have our anniversary. We have this Sunday. We're doing our drive up service. So you drive up, follow the instructions, stay in your car like you had a drive in movie, uh, tune into the radio station that we have set. And you'll be able to watch in the parking lot, uh, watch and worship. Watch and worship in from your car. It, it's, it got to get real, real good. The worship got to get real, real good if you jump out your car and shout right there by your car, but then you got to get right back in it. Um, <laughs> we're going to have our drive-up service Sunday, 1030. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you. Can't hug you, but I can at least see you. And then we're going to uh, receive communion on Sunday. All right, so that's Sunday at 1030. And then we will 
give you the details of how we're celebrating our anniversary, which is this month, the month of August. God bless you. Love you. I've said too much. Uh, Pastor Sean, can you pray our prayer benediction for us as we close out? Yes. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you would just bless this ministry, bless this man and woman of God, bless their family, God, bless all of the people who watch this. And even as we leave this Zoom, God, leave this live, we thank you that your presence goes with us and that we walk in divine protection and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Keep us safe until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just before you go, I just saw the note from uh, Sister Johanna said she has new music. Uh, wait, let me see it. All right, all right, new music. She got new music uh, on all digital music, all digital media outlets. Sister yes. Johanna, you want to say something about it? Yeah, so it's called Happy Song. It just released uh, a couple weeks ago, written by me and Steve. Um, so go get it. It's a very fun song. Um, and then also my husband is releasing a new music on August the 4th called Dream Again. So go get it, guys. <laughs> Amen. Excited. Excited. We want to support family also. Go check it out. Uh, Johanna McCoy and then Steve McCoy, August 4th, right? Yes, sir. Gotcha. All right. God bless you. Facebook, we love you. We out. We all Facebook, but we're going to hang on Zoom for a second and we going to talk, y'all. <laughs>